A shareholders group is lodging a protest against your company. The shareholders group claimed that the mean tenure for a chief executive officer was at least 11 years. A survey of 123 companies reported in the Wall Street Journal found a sample mean tenure of 9.7 years for CEOs with a standard deviation of S equals 5.2 years. You don't know the population standard deviation, but can assume it's normally distributed. You want to formulate and test a hypothesis that can be used to challenge the validity of the claim made by the group at a significance level of alpha equals 0 0.002. Your hypotheses are the null hypothesis H0 is the mu is greater than or equal to 11, and the alternative is mu less than 11. Okay, so first things first, we need to make sure we understand uh, what information we have available to us and what it is we're trying to test. So we are doing a hypothesis test and eventually we're going to try and find a p-value for the test, but for now um, let's, let's look at what we have to begin with. The claim that we're testing is the most important thing to identify to begin with. Now it's very tempting to look at this statement so the shareholders group claimed the mean tenure uh, was at least 11 years, but that's not actually what's being tested. What's being tested is uh, the validity of that. So down here it says you want to formulate and test a hypothesis that can be used to challenge the validity of the claim made by the group. And the only thing that's going to make different is that the claim is instead of being mu is greater than or equal to 11, which would be the at least 11 years, it's the complement of that. So you're testing the validity of the claim. So uh, mu is less than 11 is what we're testing. Uh, a couple other things that are important. We have a level of significance of 0 0.002. And then of course, inside the problem, we have our sample data we have a sample of 123 companies. The mean of that sample is 9.7. The standard deviation of that sample is 5.2. Now, since we're testing a mean, um, the options that we have are to use the normal distribution or the t-distribution for our calculations. The normal distribution would be used if we knew the population standard deviation of the original population. But we're told right here outright, you do not know the population standard deviation. So we don't know that. That rules out using the normal distribution. So that means we're going to be using the t distribution for our calculations which is very similar to a normal distribution. It's just, it's bell-shaped. It's just accounting for the use of a sample standard deviation instead of a population. Uh, and it also can work for small samples as well. But we can only use that if we know that the, the central limit theorem is satisfied. To satisfy the central limit theorem, one of two things needs to be true. Either the original population needs to be normal, uh, which is actually stated here. You can say the original population is normally distributed. That's great. So that satisfies the central limit theorem. But also we have a sample size of 123. And as long as our sample size is bigger than 30, then that counts for the central limit theorem. And we're guaranteed that the sampling distribution we're working with would be normally distributed. Okay, now some of the work has been done. We've already got the null and alternative hypotheses. A couple things I'd like to mention about these. Uh, first off, HA for the alternative hypothesis is common in some texts. Uh, a lot of times I see now H sub 1 for the alternative hypothesis. It's just a notational difference. It doesn't change the problem. Also, a lot of texts now just use equals in the null hypothesis instead of greater than or equal or less than or equal. 
it doesn't change the outcome of the problem in any way. Uh, it's really just a notational um, and theoretical difference. So just ignore that uh, if that's what you're used to. Now, the test statistic and the p-value. So I'm going to use the TI calculator to come up with these, but if you're using different technology, just make sure you know how your technology works to come up with these values. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and get those for this particular problem. Okay, so uh, if you press the stat button, go over to the tests menu. You'll see uh, the first two items are z-test and t-test. The first is a hypothesis test for normal distributions, and the second is for t-distributions, which is what we have. So we'll check that. You can either input your information from a set of data or from the statistics of that data. Since we already have the statistics, we'll check that and use it. Mu sub zero is the mean from the null hypothesis. Uh, so 11, we'll put that in. X bar, that's the mean of the sample, and that was given as 9.7 years. Sx is the standard deviation of our sample. And n, of course, is the number of items in the sample. Now this next set is what type of test you're working with. And it comes down to, in your alternative hypothesis, if you have uh, less than, like I do here, then you have a left-tailed test. So just think of it as a, an arrow pointing to the left. If it's greater than, then it's a right-tailed test. It's an arrow pointing to the right. And then if it's not equal to, then it's a two-tailed test. Well, in the uh, calculator here, all you really need to know is the symbol that's used. So we have a less than symbol, so that's what we'll check. Then press calculate, and we come up with a few different items here. So t is the uh, test statistic. So t is negative 2.773. The p-value is uh, 0 0.0032. And I'm just choosing some decimals here, but of course follow the rounding rules in the problem. The p-value is a less than or equal to alpha, b greater than alpha. So we need to take our p-value here and compare it to the level of significance. And what I like to do is change these values into percentages. So I'm going to move my decimal twice. And that just eliminates some leading zeros. I often find students making mistakes with comparing these because of the leading zeros and skipping over them and trying just to look at the significant digits. So eliminating some zeros helps out. But comparatively, the p-value here is bigger than alpha. So we would check greater than in this case. Then the test statistic leads to a decision to A, reject the null, B, accept the null, C, fail to reject the null. Well, one of these is a trick. Uh, we never accept the null hypothesis, so you can safely just throw that away. Your only real options are either to reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. And it comes down to how your p-value and alpha compare. So uh, if your p-value is uh, less than alpha, then you reject the null hypothesis. And what I remember here is if p is low, so if p is less than alpha, then the null must go. So reject the null hypothesis. So um, if p is low, the null must go. In this case, that's not happening. So if p value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we'll check that. And that brings us to our interpretation statement. As such, the final conclusion is that 
there is sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that the population mean is less than 11, uh, and the rest of these are basically the same if you read through, but there's some key differences. Uh, one key difference is that they all either stop, start with there is sufficient evidence or there is not sufficient evidence. Except for this one, um, it doesn't have that at all. Uh, I think that they are implying that it's supposed to be suffi is sufficient, but they all basically start with that language. Then later on, we have the evidence to warrant rejection or support. So we have to choose between those items uh, because after that is basically a restatement of just what the claim is. So to do this, uh, an easy way, and you can walk through the logic of all this, absolutely. But an easy way that I teach my students to do this is if you reject the null hypothesis, you're going to say there is sufficient evidence for whatever you want to happen whether you're rejecting the null or you're supporting the null. I'm sorry, rejecting the claim or supporting the claim. And if you fail to reject the null hypothesis, you're going to use is not sufficient. All right, since we failed to reject the null, we're checking is not sufficient. So anything with is sufficient is going to be thrown out in this case. And I think that safely throws out C as well. So that leaves either B or D for us. And we have to, to then decide if we're rejecting or supporting the claim. Now, there's a couple ways of doing this here. One is to uh, memorize where the claim is and what the interpretation is. So for instance, our claim was that the mean is less than 11. So the claim here is in the alternative hypothesis. And if the claim is in the alternative, we're trying to support it. If the claim is in the null, we're trying to reject it. And it really is just that easy. So you can come down here and uh, safely throw B out, leaving D as our final uh, answer here. But if you want to understand the logic there, uh, it's fairly straightforward to walk through. So for instance, we have in the decision failed to reject the null. So we're not saying that it's true, but we're kind of saying that it's true-ish, okay? It's more likely to be true than it is not to be true. So, um, Let's just assume for argument's sake that that means it is true. And if that's the case, then that leaves this other statement to be false. So uh, in stating that the alternative hypothesis is false, we're also stating that the claim is false. So if you come down to our statement, we said there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that the population mean is less than 11. So there's not enough evidence to support something is stating it's implying or it's pointing in the direction of being false. So that's how the logic there works out. But you can always rely on uh, what I stated here. If you reject the null, put is. Fail to reject the null, is not. If the claim is in the null, we uh, are rejecting it. If the claim is in the alternative, we are supporting.